Welcome to our webinar this fine Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my name is Megan Schaefer. I am the creative director here at ArtCloud. Uh, we are joined by Alex West, our awesome CEO and founder. And um, we are here today to talk to you about selling on ArtCloud, selling art as an artist, and um, just best practices, you know, really getting our head around um, how to sell more art, especially in the age of 2024 internet. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, I am going to um, move on to our little agenda page, give you a sense of um, who we are and uh, what we'll be talking about today. Um, I'd love to also know more about you. So in the chat, if you wouldn't mind uh, putting your website or where you're calling in from, um, we love to follow artists on Instagram too. So, uh, make sure to drop your handle. If that's something that you like to do, um, we would love to interact with you there as well. Um, to just to reiterate, uh, my name's Megan. I've been working in the arts for about 10 years and I, uh, started working for art cloud about three years ago. Uh, and so I, my background is in the arts, but I'm a digital marketing person, um, you know, as a job. So. <laughs> So yeah, and then um, you know Alex's background is in tech, kind of obviously, but um, is it, it an avid art collector and knows quite a bit about art and um, obviously respects art deeply. So um, we're really excited about these webinars. This is our last of our summer series. We've had several other web webinars in the last month and a half, and we're really looking forward to um, publishing some new events for the fall and the new year. And so. Um, keep your ear to the ground. Uh, we will make sure to email you and um, post about it on social media as well. If there's any um, so, topics you guys would like us to cover, you know, also yes. we're all ears. We're here to help however we can. So if you have any suggestions, requests. Um, That's a great note. Great note. So um, a survey will be in the follow-up email. So there's a portion where you can add what you'd like to learn, but um, also just, you know, DM us. <laughs> we are really, we try to make ourselves really available. So, um, so yeah, whatever you want us to talk about, um, if you have any, uh, you know, guests you'd like us to bring on any connect, just bring them on. We're really excited, uh, for our upcoming webinar series. So, um, so just a short thought before we get into the nitty gritty tech of it all. Um, and this is just something that it's easy to float away from the who is buying art and the why are people buying art. Um, I have these categories down here and I'll send to the step two. I don't, I'm not going to um, read it to you, but you know, who buys art and when, when do they buy it? Why do they buy it? There's a lot of emotion around it. Um, and it's challenging to buy art online, obviously when people can't touch and, and feel and be with the piece um, it's, it presents an enormous challenge for them pressing um, submit on that credit card. <laughs> so um, vacation, casual, serious collectors, obviously that's that's kind of the dream because then, you know, they're repeat collectors. They're investing not only in, um, you know, having a, a beautiful piece of work, but they're also investing in your career. They're investing in your legacy. And that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just the most beautiful feeling. Um, but, you know, interior designers, corporate buyers, philanthropic buyers, gift buyers, you know, when you are developing your sales and marketing strategies as an artist, it's really important to think about the actual people on the other end. And I have found as a, you know, a gallerist or as an artist, it's this nebulous, like, why, pe why aren't people buying my beautiful things? <laughs> um, and it makes it feel a little bit left, maybe overwhelming to think, okay, who are they? Where are they? what do they want and how does it relate to what I make? Um, so that's just a, a, just a short note, maybe a little bit more theoretical around just how art and capitalism even work in the world right now. So um, maybe more thoughts on that via a long form, more long form blog posts. I'm getting a little long winded, but <laughs> well, I think um, it is point, Megan, to like always just simplify things and go back to the basics. Cause it's in, you know, like you mentioned in the age of 2024, there's no shortage of um, blog posts or viral videos to tell you how to market and sell and be efficient. And you can get caught uh, and swept away in these complexities and tracking and analytics and, and sales tips and email templates and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And just go, going back to the basics of who actually wants 
what I'm making? How do they want to hear from me? What do they want to hear? How do I follow up? Like the, just sometimes just a big, deep breath and a reset can, can, um, we, we've certainly seen it when we take a deep breath and like really think about how we sell our product. Um, we tend to be much more effective than when we try to, you know, come in and make jam some other person's philosophy into, into our sales structure. So just keep exactly. it simple. Yeah. Keeping it simple is increasingly hard. Um, I remember to, there's a really great book that was just written about the age of um, like complete lack of attention span and, and selling art. Um, and making art and just thinking about art in, in this day and age of how, I don't know about you guys, but like, I can't pay attention to much. I, I'm so bad nowadays. Um, don't tell but, your boss that, Megan. I know. I, oh, sorry, Alex. <laughs> Hopefully I still have a job after this webinar. No, but with the phones, I mean, it's really difficult. So we're thinking in a different way. Um, so, but now we're getting into the tool. So let's go into something that we we hold dear here and that's invoicing. So it's essential. Um, it's so easy to be like, yeah, yeah, you can buy that. Here's a check. Here's the, here's the art and then not have a record. You're, that's, this is very important to us to think about invoicing, which we will show you in the platform tour. And then also thinking about consignment reports and consignments in general, um, knowing where all your work is at any given time. That way, you know, exactly what you have to sell and where and through who, um, knowledge is power in this way because it can get overwhelming especially if you are a high inventory artist um to have a ton in your you know in your storage and be like oh you know what next um and that's getting it all organized and making sure you can easily create an invoice with connected crm and easily understand um, who you're consigning to and what your galleries are doing and and who you're exhibiting through so um, just to just to double click on the consignment stuff, we hear uh, the horror stories, and I'm sure everyone on this uh, webinar has heard them, or hopefully not experienced them. Of you know, you drop a bunch of work off at a gallery or at an institution, and you drop off 14 pieces, and uh, six months later, you're asking about a particular piece, and they say they don't have it, or um, you know, they say it was delivered in this con bad condition, and so you know, formalizing those consignments and having signatures and um, you know, all the works on them and the amount, the consignment costs, all those things, having that it's a, it's a little bit of extra work, but a little bit of extra work, uh, will make, uh, your life so much easier down the road and you have to protect, uh, you know, your property. So, um, definitely exactly. worth doing the, the extra five minutes to, to create that report, to export that document, collect the signature, um, and when using a, a platform that's all in one like Art Cloud, it's under five minutes. You know, you can create a consignment um, just within a couple clicks. Uh, so we'll, I'll, we'll have Alex show you in a little bit. But um, the last you'll hear from me before I hand it over to Alex is um, just the the idea of making paying easy. Make it easy for them to buy things from you and don't be afraid to be like, how would you like to purchase this? There's so many ways to purchase this. Um, what's nice about ArtCloud is that we have integrated super secure payment processing um, through the platform that, um, you know, our galleries from big to small artists use every single day. And um, that is, that's, that's how you sell. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm going to yeah. hand it over to Alex and uh, stop the share. Any, any, any comments on this? Pretty simple. Yeah, just just to say, uh, you know, and we'll cover a little bit of this in the product, but um, you know, again, meeting your customer where they are, knowing who they are, thinking about who they are. So if they want, if they're in your studio and they want to pay uh, with the physical card, you know, we support the card swiper. If they're at home and you're emailing them an invoice and they want to pay remotely, again, just meeting them uh, where they are. You're not calling them, asking them from their credit card number. You're you're going to try to make it as easy as possible with as little friction as possible to collect that payment. So exactly as little friction as possible. Exactly. So um, I'm going to stop my share. Um, I'll also be monitoring, monitoring the Q and a um, from, from now forward. So please ask your questions uh, and, and yeah, I'll hand it over to Alex. All right. Um, and yeah, please ask questions. We can jump all over the application. Um, uh, most of you are familiar with this uh, page. This is the dashboard you see when you log into our cloud. Um, and it will always kind of refresh its suggestions on what uh, what we think might be actionable 
for you to help grow your sales. Um, I'll show you this one here. This is an interesting one. So uh, this account recently had some new artworks added and we're just prompting you to uh, create a social media campaign. So you can add these to um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, or X. Um, you can also uh, create a new consignment. So you can actually share these with, if you have gallery representation or an institution that's gonna sell them, you can click this button right here and it will automatically create that consignment um, for you. And you can also email your collectors from here as well. Um, I think in our document, so we, uh, we're going to jump into some invoicing real quick. So, uh, when you have this, we're kind of jumping to the end and we'll kind of get into some things, uh, ahead of the sales process. But, uh, when you have made the sale, when you've got that verbal commitment, they, they do want to buy the work. Let me just move zoom over here. You can just, uh, come into our clouds platform, uh, click create new invoice, fill in the, uh, contact information. Um, you can add a new contact if, if they're not in your system right then. Uh, the, the system will prompt you to say, you know, don't we don't find this person, let's add them. Uh, select the works that they're interested in. And even if they haven't uh, verbally committed to buying the piece, you can even make an, uh, an invoice and make it of status uh, on approval and then kind of send that to them and say, hey, would you like to try this on approval? Just kind of another sales tac tactic to get the work uh, into their home, um, because once they see it on their wall, it's uh, oftentimes uh, uh, won't come back. It will it will stay there. Um, so once you've made this invoice, any kind of uh, discounts, if you want to apply any discounts, if there's any um, shipping charges associated with the sale, uh, you can add those in here and you'll see the total balance. You can export this out to a PDF and then do with that whatever you may want. Uh, you can also email uh, the invoice directly from in here. So when we click this, uh, the recipient's email address will automatically populate. The The contact that we've selected in this demo account doesn't have an email address, so that didn't populate here, but um, you will automatically see this uh, this invoice right here in the email. And the, they will have the opportunity to even pay remotely. They'll be, if you have a linked a Stripe account, then they will be able to uh, click a little link right here and pay remotely. So you can collect that payment effortlessly. Um, when you are not in the studio. Um, if if they are uh, interested in, if you're collecting the payment manually here, you can just under the payments tab, you can uh, go over here, we can click add contact payment. Uh, if you do have Stripe uh, enabled or Stripe credit card processing with us enabled, uh, you'd see a, a slightly different modal here that will let you enter the card uh, information manually, or we also support a terminal if you're interested in kind of card present uh, transactions. You can log any information here. So maybe it's a, a check or a Venmo, um, any kind of notes like uh, that you might want to add. You'll see that we pre-populate the total uh, invoice balance just to make it easy for you here. But if they're on a payment plan, perhaps say uh, not many people are, are writing a $20,000 uh, transaction. So maybe they need to break that up into um, you know five different transactions. So maybe $4,000 here. Um, so we could say one of four installments uh, as our note, just to keep track of these payments. And you can see now um, this payment will be added. We're automatically keeping track of the total of the invoice, the net paid. And then on the invoice down here, we'll show the balance due. Um, and again, they can uh, pay that at any given time. Um, any questions so far about invoicing before we jump into some consignment management? You have to have a billing address associated with the contact. You do not have to have a billing address associated with the contact. Um, so. Cool. Um, all right. So some consignments. Uh, consignments act a lot like quick lists. So if you've been using any of our quick list functionality inside of our cloud, consignments are just kind of like a special type of quick list. So we're going to go over here. Uh, we're going to make a, uh, a gallery consignment. Uh, which is kind of like any kind of external consignment that you'd be sending out. Well, we can go ahead and make uh, a title for this. This can be anything that you want, want to do. So maybe it's fall consignment or a solo show. Um, you can, if you want, these are optional, but you can set a start date and an end date for that consignment. Just to, again, um, be very clear with your consignee, consignor, um, you know, what the terms of this consignment are. This isn't that they keep the inventory forever or until they sell it. This is, you know, you can you can uh, pick your um, 
your date terms, uh, the recipient gallery. So you pick from any of your galleries uh, in this account or contacts. So if you're going to consign it to an individual, you can also select the person. Um, the terms, you can select default terms or you can add any terms in here like um, payment is due for all sold work on the 15th after the, the month that it sells or, you know, whatever um, terms you may, you know, the consigner is responsible for shipping back, whatever uh, kind of consignment terms that you uh, work with, you can put those into this uh, field here. So we'll just um, consigner is responsible for shipping, the return shipping cost for return shipping cost and payments are due on the 15th of the following month of a sale. Um, if, if the consigner who you're consigning to has an rcloud account, you can actually send this consignment to them inside of rcloud. And that's really cool because when they sell a work, you will automatically get an email notification letting you know that that's happened. So you don't have to go to your artist profile page on their website and hit refresh over and over and over again. Hope uh, kind of checking your inventory to see if it's still uh, available or there. Um, so you just get a little bit more transparency into what's going on. Um, if they're not on our cloud, no problem. You can still create this document. Um, we're going to go ahead and add some inventory here. So let's just, for the sake of a demo, we'll add these three works. Um, and from here we can, again, just like all of our other collateral, we can send an email. Um, so we can email this to uh, perhaps the consigner. You can see that there's uh, a signature block in here. Or we can also export this to PDF. Um, so again, just making it really, really easy for you to create good looking uh, consignment documents that will protect you and your inventory um, from uh, events that far too commonly become a problem. Um, Megan, remind me, what else were we gonna jump into here? Uh, creating sales collateral. Um, so another uh, great thing, and this is one of my favorite things about Arcloud, we we put so much energy into our collateral builder and, and the, the different ways you can format it. And we, that might be a good webinar. We could, we won't, we won't dive into all the customizations uh, <laughs> this one, but, but you have a lot of flexibility in and all the formatting and one of the things you can export out from any consignment or any quick list is uh your actually no these are consignments let's go to our quick list if you wanted to make a price list for example um, so let's say there's four or five pieces you wanted to send a, a collector or a client they came into the studio they were interested in a couple different works we could make a, a list for alex so, or let's say it's for megan megan Megan's favorites, babes. Um, we, if, if there's any kind of tagging we need to do for internal management, we can do that. Uh, but what we'll do here is we will go ahead and um, add some works. So let's say that Megan came in the studio and liked these uh, four very expensive works. Uh, we can also opt this into our website. So if we have in our cloud website, we can actually opt this quick list in as a, a private viewing room and then get a, a URL or create a QR code and send that to Megan. Um, if not, if we want to do kind of uh, the more traditional route, we can export out uh, a multitude of collateral. So a uh, price list, for example, we could export, uh, create this document. We can, um, if we wanted to hide pricing or show pricing or remove the alternate dimensions, you know, we can, we can have a lot of control over what information we're showing in this collateral. And as we make these changes, you'll see that the the preview here updates uh, immediately. So you'll get a really good sense of what you're about to send the client. Um, again, all of this is customizable. So if you have uh, an ArtCloud account, or if you don't uh, sign up for a free trial and poke around, um, we'll, we'll maybe do another webinar where we get into the, some of the deep dives of uh, collateral editing, but these are all the typography, the spacing, the location, the format, everything is, is customizable um, to you to fit your brand. You can then email this uh, again, to the contact. It's always, I think, a great idea to email uh, tear sheets or price lists or invoices to the client. One, you're going to get their email address. So if they're in the studio, instead of just printing out a PDF, uh, if you can get their email address uh, so that you can say, hey, I'm going to send you this document, it's just a great way to now have that contact information. And you can now include them in your email newsletters. Um, uh, and you'll also be able to have, uh, you'll be able to check the engagement. So you can see, did they open this email? Did they click on anything? 
You can even uh, link these images to your website so that if they're, you know, looking at it, they're considering, they're thinking about it, but, you know, they can only see one small image in this price list. Maybe they click on the image and now they're on the inventory detail page. They can see your additional images. They can do a virtual room install. So again, going back to that concept of meeting your collectors where they are, not everyone is ready to buy right away. Some people still want to be sold. They want to have their confidence built up a little bit. They want to think about it. And so meeting where, meeting them where they are and kind of warming them up um, will be a much more effective strategy than just kind of, hey, click here to buy. Um, so just keep that in mind, trying to, trying to really personalize the communication um, so that you're meeting that collector where they are in their buyer's journey. Um, Megan, what else did we... <laughs> say we're gonna do Let's here see here uh <laughs> sorry guys I, I got been out of town for a couple of weeks and we just got back and so it's been a, a heck of a catch-up week we um there's also some sales uh reporting that we wanted to uh go over with you guys so mm -hmm. as you start to make sales you'll have uh this analytics dashboard you'll be able to see where your sales happen geographically. So if you do have a website and you're doing e-commerce or people you're selling off of Instagram, you'll be able to get a sense of where in the country your sales are happening. This is great for um, knowing if it makes sense to uh, run ads, if you're if you're experimenting with any kind of Instagram ads, things like that, if you wanna pick different zip codes. Um, uh, we also have the sales over time report that's just gonna give you like a nice, let me go ahead and pick like a broader date range. This is just going to give you a nice overview of, of any kind of custom date range and kind of what were your total sales and how that broke out by art, tax, and shipping. Just and another important thing, it's really easy. Uh, we hear artists all the time say, I sold $20,000 worth of work. And um, you know that may not actually be $20,000 worth of income. That could have been shipping cost and taxable things. And so- um, Framing, if that's still on you. Framing, yeah. Any kind of those incurred expenses, it's just important to- uh, we, we always believe that whenever we can surface this information to you uh, in a nice, easy to read format, then you're going to you're gonna have a better intuition on what your real numbers are. And that way you can make better decisions as you plan um, uh, your strategies. Yeah. And you also um, can export that information to QuickBooks. Um, that is something that we have available as well. Um, Alex, the, the couple things on my mind that I'm thinking about, um, I'd love to touch on Copilot and how we surface sales tips and a bunch of different cool stuff in our dashboard. Um, and then just br very briefly touch on our marketplace, which is what we like to call a supplemental sales floor. Um, it's a great place that we basically have all of our customers and or, or many of our customers, you're able to opt into the marketplace um, and have your have your art on there as well. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Great. So the, the copilot okay. is, this, is this kind of stream of suggestions that are on the homepage when you first log in. Um, you'll see things like this, like these marketing tips, like share your new arrivals on um, social. Uh, this is a demo account, so there's not a lot of uh, activity and data. But if uh, as you start to use your account, you'll see that this will populate quite a bit more with more actionable suggestions. Um, the marketplace uh, is pretty cool. Uh, oh, this is... Uh, this is so a maybe demo. my demo account. Doesn't yeah, I cannot. <laughs> but uh, I'll pull up uh, what's what's cool about this. Uh, you know, some uh, artist marketplaces like Saatchi and a couple others may not always. Well, one, they're going to charge you uh, quite a bit for them. Our marketplace is zero percent commission, and it's included with all subscription levels of our cloud. Um, it's also going to give you a lot of really great analytics. So you're going to see the number of times people looked at any of your artwork how many contacts have been created from inquiries that came through there. We'll give you all the con uh, collector's information. So we're not going to hide their email address. It's, you know, for you to start communicating with them. So it's a great way for you to meet more collectors and, and have collectors uh, find your work. Uh, and then this is, we'll just kind of browse on, on pull up our marketplace. This is what it looks like as, um, as you browse around. So uh, people can browse art uh, by a plethora of different uh, parameters um, you can see all the artists, uh, you can um, drill down into different uh, styles. We have kind of a, a, ge a geographical way of browsing different cities and, and finding art in different cities. Uh, so it's just a cool uh, way to improve your discoverability. And, and for collectors, we've always thought about this as a way for collectors uh, who are um, curious about art to be able to kind of come in a, a nice welcoming environment to, to learn more. And, and as we think about features for our marketplace, uh, over time, we'll, 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 we will be investing in things like uh, conversation and discourse and community and, and how uh, 
um, artists and uh, collectors can interact directly on the marketplace. Copilot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the Copilot? Yeah. So this, again, we, we, I think we covered it a couple of times, but again, like as your account will have more Copilot feeds in uh, suggestions in it as you use the, as you use your account, um, this demo account only has these two, uh, but there'll be some around uh, making email campaigns, any kind of follow up reminders. If you've gotten an inquiry off the marketplace, but you've forgotten to reply, um, the Copilot will remind you to, to send a follow up reminder to uh, collectors that have gone cold, things like that. So there's a lot of great actionable uh, tips in this. And so as you log in, um, uh, you know, scroll through them, interact with them, dismiss the ones you're not interested in. Um, let us know other tips you might be interested in seeing. Cool. Um, let's see here. I think that we might be ready to move on to our Q and A, Alex. I think um, uh, a couple of tips that are coming up for me about um, about selling on specifically a website, which we've talked about in previous webinars, um, is having multiple views of your work. Um, I see Karen is asking if your images are only digital or just at this point can be made into different sizes and output to various media like metal, fine art paper, et cetera. Um, that's that's a little challenging that I think, I mean, all photographers have this um, this issue, but um, there are also a lot of resources to mock up your work. So even just putting it in Photoshop and, and putting it on something else, just giving people a sense of what it might look like in their home. Um, thinking outside the box as we all have to do with, um, you know, representing our work on the internet. Uh, that would be my, my recommendation. And then maybe getting some test prints actually done and having them photographed. Um, I, that's not, you know, out of the realm of the imagination. Um, thinking about oh. how you can, you know, get that image into a collector's mind. Yeah. One, one other thing you could do, Karen, is um, we support edition management. And so you could create a different edition for every uh, option of the artwork that uh, you have. So you have an edition series for um, acrylic, you have an edition series for it on paper uh, at this size or this size or this size. And then what's what's cool is you can, uh, under the edition title, uh, make link all those edition sets. So you, it might be one image of a tree and it can be printed on metal, it could be printed on canvas, it could be printed on paper at different sizes. And so you could still have that one image of a tree on your website. And when the user clicks on it, they'll be able to see all the available editions. So if you have uh, any problems setting that up, just chat with our support team and um, or look at our knowledge base. There's a, a lot of documentation on edition uh, sets and title management. Um, Kathy, I see your request about FedEx. Uh, it, uh, I don't have a, a great update. On, I don't. Uh, I just don't have an update on it yet. I've been out of town and I will be catching up with the developers, but I will email you um, tomorrow when I get an update on it. It's it's coming soon. It's very, it's very, very close. It's news to me, I think too, where I, I just said, I'm as excited about this as you are. Um, <laughs> we always have so many things moving forward and um, recently did an email about um, to our gallery specifically about all the features that we've unveiled in the last couple months um, based specifically on their feedback. So we'd like to try to stay as close to our artists and our arts workers in our galleries as possible. Um, but we're, we're always cooking something else up uh, and improving upon the things that we already have. And FedEx stuff is really exciting. <laughs> But hey, um, Judy, I see your your request too, and and uh, certainly chime in to our support team if if this doesn't help. Um, because I can't, I don't want to pull up your account with everyone here, but um, I imagine that your portfolio page is uh, is pulling artwork either off of a tag or off of a specific quick list. So um, if that resonates with you, if that if that jogs your memory, then then the, to get that new artwork to show up on your portfolio, you need to add it to that quick list or add that tag. If you that, if that does not resonate with you, just uh, chime in with the support team and, and we'll jump, one of us will jump in and, and help you get that uh, squared away. And Karen, we do not offer phone support, unfortunately, but uh, if you email support at rcloud.com or chat in, we have uh, uh, a team of people that are happy to help you. And if, if, if needed, we can escalate it to a, a phone call. Um, and I just reiterated with um, a text version of that. Thank you, Alex. Um, uh, I love these webinars when they also have real life support happening. It's not all just the theoretical stuff. It's like, no, 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 we we know the product. <laughs> we, we're, we'll let you know. 
um, what it, what is recommended. But um, oh, thank you, Kathy. That's awesome. Um, so yeah. Oh, and with commissions, Carrie's talking about commissions. How do we handle commissions in our cloud, Alec? Um, so, or what are some examples of people that have done it in the past? I guess. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of different ways to do commissions. You can typically uh, artists will will come in and make a new piece of inventory. Uh, if you don't have the title for the commission, you you could literally just say, um, you know, commission for Megan. And you can then add that to your invoice, um, and then you can uh, collect. You know, you can collect a partial payment on that. So, to, however you want to structure it. So, you know, just a uh, we'll we'll kind of create this uh, um, commission for Megan, and then as, if you do decide to title later on, you can always change the title. Any any information in here that you can that you can put in. There's no information required, so you can literally just do this. And then from here, we can click the invoice button right here. So we're going to go right to the invoice. This piece is already on there. Um, we forgot to give it a price. Let's just say that it's going to be a $3,000 commission. Um, we can put Megan's information in if, if, if she's in here. And then um, uh, you could either click the payment in full, if that's how you run your business, or you could just add a, um, you know, a partial payment here. Uh, so however you however, and collect that through Venmo, through Stripe, however you want to, to collect that partial payment. So that would be, that is the most common way to do it. Sometimes people will make like a artwork that says like first half a commission because they want to have, have the different payments on different invoices. But I, I think that gets way overly complicated and, and unnecessary. So I would, I would recommend just making a new artwork, adding it to an invoice, collecting that partial payment, and then collecting the, the final payment when you're, uh, doing the delivery. And if you're really good updating it with the actual completed photo of the inventory item, once you, once you're done, uh, that would, that would make my heart happy for seeing it all in, uh, you know, in, in your, uh, dashboard in your inventory dashboard. And the cool thing, um, that if, you, if you do, if you do take that, um, that image of that completed commission, you can even make a quick list of all your commissioned work or tag it as a commissioned work. And that way, if a client came to you later on and said, hey, can you show me some examples of your commissions? You could always pull up that list of commissioned work, create a price list, create a tear sheet list, have that collateral. And that's another sales tactic. You could say, look, look, here is my portfolio. If you have a website with us, you can have a page for commissions, um, uh, which would be another great way. Again, going back to the idea of meeting people where they are, if someone's browsing your site, they may not know that you do commissions. And so if you have a page um, that walks through the commission process, you know, I, I take commissions, it's, uh, they cost this much. It's a, usually an eight week lead time. I take half the payment up front. Like any, any of that information you can give uh, browsers, uh, the more engaged, the more uh, website inquiries you're going to get, I believe the more contact form yeah. submissions you're going to see because um, you're kind of answering people's questions and then they can then, they, they have that confidence to then make, make the, to ask you that second question, that third question. Exactly. And, and be, yeah, being elusive or subtle in this way, it just won't be helpful. Like if you make reproductions, if you are open to reproductions, a lot of artists aren't, many artists are. If you're open to commissions of a certain size, of a certain type, if you're only willing to commission paintings over paper, um, say it on your website um, and that way people know. Um, uh, Karen's asking if there's any advantage to be so being associated with the gallery that takes a commission or just uploading your work to a free account on ArtCloud. I think that you could do both. Um, the reason, uh, I guess, the ideology behind having a gallery or galleries throughout um, different regions of the world. Oh, yes. You know, here we are. We made it. Um, is the fact that you don't have reach in other cities and you don't have reach all over the world unless you do. And congrats. But I think it's common to... Um, you know, bite the bullet and have a gallery take, you know, a 50% commission. That's pretty standard, which um, sounds like a lot, but they're doing a lot of work. You, They need to work for you um, to make sure that they sell the work that you give them. Um, but, you know, if you upload your work and do a free account on ArtCloud, you know, we're a management platform. There's a lot you can do with ArtCloud, but there's also a lot you can do with your gallery relationships and soliciting a gallery relationship is maybe something we can do a webinar on. I think we actually might have content on that, but, um, you know, a gallery relationship is a, it's a fickle beast, but it is, um, it is how the art world works in a lot of ways and has for a long time. So, um, it's good to have a really good gallerist that like really understands your work and, um, 
really is an advocate for you. And it's an, also an advocacy thing as well. If they're going to art fairs, uh, arts or crafts fairs, whatever, you know, they, it's just another way for you to be able to stay in the studio and actually make your art and not be the salesperson of it. Um, Alex, do you want to add anything on? I feel yeah, that's I think my that, uh, waxing poetic yeah, about it, but. You know, I, I, I don't think there's um, a silver bullet for any of this. So Karen, I'd, I'd suggest you to kind of experiment, see what you think works best for you. Um, it sure is nice to have other people do the sales for you and deal with clients and shipping complaints that it, FedEx didn't arrive or it arrived damaged or, you know, having that kind of handler. If So if you have the opportunity to to work with a, a, a gallery that you trust, and then, you know, I certainly would explore that relationship. But again, just like Megan said, if, 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 uh, if you don't have the opportunity to have a gallery that you trust, you can certainly do it yourself. You can do it. Um, the, the platform is really designed to do everything that you need to run a successful, organized, um, effective, efficient uh, studio business. So uh, yeah, with galleries and without it's, it's all across the board. And then if you're, especially if you're exhibiting through maybe a museum show where, um, you know, sales aren't really the main point, you know, you have a contact within your database that are your museum contacts, that are your institutional contacts. Um, you know, that's just another way to get your work out there. Um, and you can organize all of that. So you're, you can wrap your whole head around all of your relationships by using something like art cloud. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, well, um, you guys will hear from me, uh, in the next few days with, um, with this deck, I will add, um, that book that I was mentioning about attention span and buying art is uh, fabulous. So I'll add a link to that as well. And please fill out our survey and, um, keep the recommendations coming and, um, thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. All right, guys. Bye.